The topic is sexual reproduction in flowering plants. So, in this question number 1, which is the most logical sequence with reference to life cycle of angiosperms? The given options A germination, endosperm formation, seed dispersal and double fertilization. Option B cleavage, fertilization, grafting, fruit formation. Option C pollination, fertilization, seed formation and germination. Option D maturation, mitosis, differentiation and fertilization. So, here the sequence of uh, the steps which are taking place in the life cycle of flowering plants. Here as we know that the flowers are the sexually reproducing organs and uh, they participate in a process called as pollination that is the transfer of pollen grains from anther to the stigma either it may be by the self or uh, cross pollination mechanism. As we know that uh, if self pollination is there no need of any agent for uh, pollination, but if it is in cross pollination agents are required for the transfer of pollen grains from anther to the stigma of different flowers. Once the pollination is completed, so the male and female gametes will fuse. The fusion of male and female gametes is called as fertilization process. Here this is an internal fertilization in the higher plants where uh, the pollen grains uh, will form a pollen tube and that pollen tube will release the male gametes into the ovule or embryo sac where they will fuse with the egg cell to form zygote. That process is called as fertilization and uh, this after fertilization the ovule which is present will be converted into seed that is a uh, seed formation and if it is an uh, angiospermic plant along with the, the along with the embryo the endosperm will also be present inside the seed. Actually the zygote will get modified or uh, as a change of post fertilization will be converted into embryo and uh, as a result of triple fusion the primer endosperm nucleus will be formed that will be converted into endosperm. So, here the seed will be formed then when the seed uh, is formed it will when it is get germinated and it will give rise to the next generation of the plants. So, these are the logical sequence of uh, steps which are taking place in the life cycle of an uh, angiospermic plant. First one the pollination, fertilization, seed formation and the germination. So, from the given options option C is the correct answer. Question number 2 the pollen grain is related to the embryo sac as the given options are A male gametophyte is to the egg, B male gametophyte is to the female gametophyte, C sperm is to the egg and D sperm is to the female gametophyte. So, here the pollen grain. So, pollen grain is considered to be the first cell of male gametophyte that is a male gametophyte generation will start with the pollen grain. So, here this is the thing where uh, pollen grains are considered to be the first cell of male gametophyte. When the pollen grains will germinate it will be converted into a three celled structure. So, along with the pollen tube now that is called as uh, the matured male gametophyte and embryo sac it is a part of uh, female gametophyte or we can say it is a structure which is present inside the ovule and uh, this is called as a female gametophyte. That means the pollen grain is related to the embryo sac as male gametophyte to the female gametophyte. 
So from the given options, option B is the correct answer. Question number three. The sequence of development of embryo sac is the given options are option A, archisporium, megaspore, megasporophyte, and embryo sac. Option B, archisporium, megaspore, megaspore mother cell, and embryo sac. Option C, archisporium, megaspore mother cell, megaspore, and embryo sac. Option D, none of the above. So here, in the development of embryo sac, embryo sac is otherwise called as female gametophyte also. So here, embryo sac is a structure which is present inside the ovule. Here, if you consider the structure of the ovule, this is the ovular structure. Inside the ovule, a diploid tissue is present. That diploid tissue is called as nucellus. So this is called as a nucellus. And uh, one of the cell of this nucellus will become larger, and uh, that cell will be acting as a archisporial cell. Or we can call it as archisporium. This is an diploid cell. This archisporium cell or archisporial cell will be converted into megaspore mother cell. And here, archisporial cell, when it is converted into megaspore mother cell, there will be no change in the ploidy of the cells because here archisporium is deployed and also megaspore mother cell is also deployed. This megaspore mother cell, let us take this one as a megaspore mother cell, this will undergo meiosis. When it undergo meiosis, it will be converted into linear tetrad of cells. This linear tetrad of cells is called as tetrad of megaspores. And all the megaspores are haploid because the meiosis have been taken place. When the meiosis occurs, the chromosome number will get reduced to half. And out of this, the upper one which are towards the chalazal side, so, repeat, out of these four, the upper one which are towards the micropylar end will get degenerated and the one which is towards the chalazal end will retain as a functional megaspore. So this can be shown like this here. So the degenerating megaspores, these are the three degenerating uh, megaspores which are present towards the micropylar end. And uh, the one which is towards the chalazal end is retained as a functional megaspore. And this functional megaspore will undergo mitosis and uh, it will be converted into embryo sac. So here, uh, here it will undergo first mitosis like this where two nuclei will be formed and further it will undergo further mitosis and each of the cell will be converted into two nuclei and further mitosis where it will be converted into an 8 nucleated structure. This 8 nucleated structure out of this one cell from the lower side will come to the center, one cell from the upper side will come to the center and that will be converted into an uh, 8 nucleated structure where uh, 3 nuclei are present on the upper pole and 3 are present on the lower pole and 2 are present in the center. And these three are converted into agaparatus, these three are converted into antipodos, the central one will be converted into the central two polar nuclei will be converted into central cell. Likewise, an eight nucleated and seven cell structure is formed called as an embryo sac. So, if you see the sequence of uh, steps during the development of embryo sac, first it has been started with the archisporium, and second it will be it is converted into megaspore mother cell. 
it have been divided to form into the mega spore functional mega spore and lastly it will be it is converted into the embryo sac so this is a correct sequence of uh, changes which are taking place during the development of embryo sac that is uh, archisporium megaspore mother cell megaspore and embryo sac so from the given options option c is the correct answer question number 4 if a pollen of a flower falls on the stigma of another flower belonging to the same plant it is the given options are a ecologically cross pollination b genetically and ecologically cross pollination c genetically self pollination and ecologically cross pollination and d none of these so here two flowers are participating in the pollination but both these flowers are present on one plant that is on the same plant so here <coughs> it appears to be like a two flowers are participating so we can call as a cross pollination process but when you see it in the form of ecological and genetical aspect ecologically the two flowers are uh, separately present or different but they are present on the same plant maybe they are present on the same plant it appears to be like the transfer of pollen grains from anther to the stigma of two different flowers so we call it as ecologically cross pollination but if you observe that maybe that uh, two flowers are participating but the genetical makeup of the two flowers will be same so as there is no change in the genetical makeup it it is equal to self pollination that is genetically this process is self pollination that is when two flowers present on the same plant are participating in the pollination process ecologically it may be cross pollination but genetically make up of uh, the egg cell and uh, the male gamete which are participating in the fertilization will have same nature that's the reason why we can say that uh, genetically they are self pollination process so from the given options option c is the correct answer question number 5 the movement of pollen of pollen tube towards the embryo sac is the given options are thigmotactic b thermotactic c chemotactic and d phototactic so here for this process there is a structure called as filiform apparatus or filiform apparatus so these are the structures or these are the finger like structures present in the synergids so if you consider this as embryo sac uh, micropylar side of the embryo sac in this one the central cell will be the x cell and on either side we can see two other cells are present these are called as uh, synergids these synergids will have some finger like structures like this these finger like structures are the one which are uh, useful for actually they will look as, these are filiform apparatus and these filiform apparatus will secrete some chemicals so these chemicals are useful for directing the pollen tube towards the embryo sac that means the pollen tube is attracted because of the chemicals that have been secreted by the filiform apparatus so this type of movement uh, it is because of the chemical so we can call it as a chemotactic type of movement so from the given options option c is the correct answer question number 6 when a diploid female plant is crossed with tetraploid male the ploidy of endosperm cells in the resulting seed is the given options are a diploid 
B triploid, C tetraploid, and D pentaploid. So here the female one is diploid in condition and the male one is in tetraploid condition. So here these are the parents when they form the, form the gametes the gamete will be in haploid condition here the male gamete will be in diploid condition. So here the question is related to the endosperm. So endosperm is formed by the fusion of the male gamete with that of secondary nucleus. Here if you consider the male gamete, male gamete is a 2n in condition and uh, if the female one is haploid the second nucleus will be diploid in condition because it is formed by the fusion of haploid upper polar nucleus with that of haploid lower polar nucleus. So that is the reason why here the second nucleus will be 2n in condition. So when a diploid male gamete is fused with the diploid second nucleus, so it will be converted into primary endosperm nucleus which is having 4n condition that is tetraploid condition and this primary endosperm nucleus will be converted into endosperm which is also having the same type of ploidy as like that of primary endosperm nucleus. So when a fusion is taking place between diploid female plant with that of tetraploid male plant, the ploidy of the endosperm present in the seed will be in tetraploid condition. So from the given options, option C is the correct answer. Question number 7, a pollen tube enters the ovule through chalaza lying opposite the micropyle. It will enter the embryo sac through the given options are A chalazal end, B laterally, C antipodal hostorium and uh, D micropylar end. So here it is related to entry of pollen tube into embryo sac. Here before the entry of pollen tube into embryo sac, the pollen tube have to enter into the ovule. The pollen tube enters into ovule by three methods, either it may be through the micropyle, so we call it as porogamy, like this where the pollen tube directly enters into this is porogamy where the pollen tube directly enters into the ovule through the micropyle and uh, second one is called as chalazogamy where the pollen tube enters into embryo sac sorry pollen tube enters into ovule through the chalaza and uh, third method is there where the pollen tube enters into ovule through the integuments or through the chalaza repeat or through the funicle So it may either enter like this. Water may be the condition that is uh, this is called as uh, mesogamy. Here the entry of pollen tube into ovule may be either by porogamy, chalazogamy and mesogamy. But after entering into the ovule, the pollen tube enters into embryo sac only through the 
micro pile okay that means in this case directly it will enter like this through the micro pile it will enter into embryo sac but if you consider chelazo gummy gradually it will move through this structure like this it will move and it will reach the micro pile region and enters into the embryo sac and in mesogamy also the same thing it will enters it will come towards the micro pile enters into embryo sac through the micro pile that means the micro pile may enter repeat that means the pollen tube may enter into ovule by either of the three methods but it will enter into embryo sac only through the micro pilar end so from the given options option d is the correct answer question number 8 when pollen of a flower transferred to the stigma of another flower of the same plant the pollination is referred to as the given options are a autogamy b gynogamy c xenogamy and d allogamy so here once again two flowers and one plant that means uh, the two flowers are participating in the pollination but the two plants repeat but the two flowers are present on the same plant so here the options that have been given first one is autogamy so autogamy is nothing but self pollination self pollination means it is taking place in the bisexual flower where single flower will be participating in the pollination that means uh, the pollen grains are transferred from anther to the stigma of the same flower b gynogamy gynogamy is a process where two flowers are participating which are present on two plants belonging to same species that means uh, two plants are participating in the process c xenogamy xenogamy is a process where two flowers are participating in the cross pollination but they are present on same plant and the d that have been given here that is allogamy allogamy is the other name for cross pollination so the question it have been given that pollen grains are transferred from anther of one flower to that of the stigma of another flower but those flowers are present on the same plant so that is uh, referred to as a xenogamy process so from the given options option c is the correct answer question number 9 endosperm is formed during the double fertilization by the given options are a two polar nuclei and one male gamete b one polar nuclei and one male gamete c ovum and male gamete d two polar nuclei and two male gametes so here double fertilization is the unique feature present in angiosperms that is uh, two times the fertilization will be taking place that is called a syngamy the fertile first fertilization where haploid male gamete will fuse with the haploid female gamete to produce zygote whereas the second step is called as triple fusion here triple fusion is a process where the three sets of chromosomes are fused one thing that uh, when a pollen grain germinates produces a pollen tube and the pollen tube which enters into ovary ovule and finally into embryo sac where it will release both the male gametes into the embryo sac 
the first male gamete will fuse with the XL to form into zygote called as to form uh, called as syngamy. Whereas the second male gamete, which is haploid in condition, will fuse with the polar nuclei. So here, how many polar nuclei will be there? Means two polar nuclei will be there. That is the uh, one upper polar nuclei, one upper polar nucleus and the other one will be the lower polar nucleus. Both of them will be participating in the process. So, here two polar nuclei will be participating resulting into formation of the primer endosperm nucleus which is further converted into endosperm cell which is triploid in condition. So, during the process of uh, double fertilization, endosperm is formed by the fusion of one male gamete with that of two polar nuclei. So, from the given options, option A is the correct answer. Question number 10, double fertilization involves, the given options are A, fertilization of the egg by two male gametes, B, fertilization of two eggs in the same embryo sac by two sperms brought by one pollen tube, C, fertilization of the egg and the central cell by two sperms brought by different pollen tubes. D. Fertilization of the egg and the central cell by two sperms brought by the same pollen tube. So, here this is also the question related to the double fertilization process. Double fertilization is brought over by the, the two male gametes. from single pollen grain or single pollen tube. It is not by the different pollen tubes or the different pollen grains, but the two male gametes which have been brought by the single pollen tube will be participating in the double fertilization process. Out of these two male gametes, one male gamete will fuse with the XL which is haploid, both of them are haploid resulting into fo formation of the zygote which is diploid in condition and this process is called as syngamy and uh, the second male gamete is the first male gamete and the second male gamete which is brought by the same pollen tube will fuse with the secondary nucleus or it is otherwise the central cell. Central cell contains two polar nuclei, one from the upper side and lower, uh, one from the lower side that is called as upper polar nucleus and lower polar nucleus. So, any of them we can consider. So, and uh, this will be diploid condition resulting into formation of a primary endosperm nucleus, further it will be converted into the endosperm cell and uh, this primary endosperm nucleus and the endosperm cell will be triploid in condition because uh, one set of chromosomes from the male gamete and two sets of chromosomes from the second nucleus are fused here and this process is called as triple fusion. So, both syngamy and triple fusion are brought about by the two male gametes which have been uh, brought by single pollen tube. So, from the given options, the option D is the correct answer. Question number 11. In flowering plants, a matured male gametophyte is derived from a pollen mother cell by the given options are A, two mitotic divisions, B, one meiotic and two mitotic divisions, C, three mitotic divisions and D, a single meiotic division. Okay, here the pollen mother cell. which is diploid in condition. Okay, here this is a mother cell for the male gametophyte. This uh, pollen mother cell first will undergo meiosis and converted into tetrad of microspores. Consider this as a pollen mother cell 
which had been undergone meiosis to form into tetrad of microspore, microspores and here the arrangement of microspores will be in the different form. So, we can see only three cells from the one view and one more cell will be present on the back side. So, here these cells have been uh, binded with the help of uh, the callus and when the callus is dissolved, so the four cells will get separated and uh, we get the microspores or otherwise these are called as pollen grains. And uh, the tetrad of microspores are also haploid along as like uh, the microspores when they are separated they also been haploid in condition. And this microspore, each microspore let us take one microspore here. This microspore will have exine wall and the intern wall along with the plasma membrane and uh, inside the plasma membrane the cytoplasmic contents are present with along with a large central vacuole and a nucleus. The nucleus will divide first by mitosis and it will be converted into two nucleated structure. The smaller one is called as a generative cell and the larger one is called as a vegetative cell. And further, this generative cell will divide to form into two male gametes. And uh, here the type of division will be mitosis. And now here the structure is, the, this structure will be having one vegetative cell and the two male gametes. So, now we can call it as three celled structure. This three cell structure is nothing but the matured male gametophyte. So, here from one pollen mother cell we are getting actually we are getting four uh, mature male gametophytes, but when you are talking about one mature male gametophyte, so one meiosis and two mitosis will be taking place. So, from the given options, option B is the correct answer. Question number 12, one advantage of cleistogamy is the given options are A it leads to greater genetic diversity. Option B, seed dispersal is more efficient and widespread. Option C, seed set is not dependent on pollinators. D, each visit of a pollinator results in transfer of hundreds of pollen grains. So, here cleistogamy. In the, in the pollination process, there are two conditions are there, one is called as cleistogamy and other is called as chasmogamy. Cleistogamy is the pollination which occurs in a closed flower. That means, the, the flowers which never open, they will participate in the pollination. Such type of pollination is called as cleistogamy. As the flowers never open, there is no chance of uh, the pollen grains from other flowers to be transmitted to this flower. That means, uh, here definitely they have to go for self pollination only. The self pollination which occurs in a flower which never opens is called as cleistogamy and uh, as we are saying it as a mandatory that it is uh, compulsory the self pollination is taking place. So, no need of pollinators. That means, uh, Unfortunately, if pollinators are absent, there is no possibility for cross pollination. But here, if pollinators are not available, then also there is a chance of uh, pollination leading to the formation of seeds. That is, seed set is possible in absence of pollinators also, or the seed set is not dependent on the pollinators. So, from the given options, option C is the correct answer. Question number 13, which of the following statements about sporopollenin is false? The given options are, option A, exine is made up of sporopollenin, B, sporopollenin is one of the resistant organic materials, option C, exine has apertures called germ pores where sporopollenin is present, D, sporopollenin can withstand high temperature and strong acids. So, here this is about the exine wall. 
So here exine wall of uh, the pollen grain is made up of a chemical called as sporopollenin. If you consider the, if you observe the structure of uh, this pollen grain, the pollen grain uh, contains thick wall on the outer side that is because of excess deposition of the chemical called as sporopollenin and uh, this is a region. So, this is exine wall and this is a intine wall inside which a large vacuole is present and nucleus is pushed towards one side and this is cytoplasmic content. And here this structure is called as jump pore. Exine wall is thick, but at some aperture side, at some apertures, we can see that the exine wall is a very thin or non deposition of the sporopollen will be taking place. That a circular region is called as a jump pore. And one more thing that so sporopollen have some special features that is, uh, it is uh, resistant to organic materials. and uh, it can withstand high temperatures and also strong acids. And uh, no enzyme can degrade sporopollenin. So, these are the some special features that have been acquired uh, to the pollen grain due to presence of uh, sporopollen in the exine wall. And uh, germ pore is the only region where the exine wall is uh, not present or the less deposition will be present. So, from the given option, the false statement is exine has apertures called germ pores where sporopollen is present, but actually the germ pore is a region where the sporopollen is absent. So, from the given options, option C is the correct answer. Question number 14, in angiosperms, functional megaspore develops into, the given options are A, embryo sac, B, ovule, C, endosperm and D, pollen sac. So, here starting with uh, A, embryo sac, B, ovule, C, endosperm and uh, option D is the pollen sac. Pollen sac is the chamber present in the anther where the pollen grains are present. And endosperm is a structure which is a nutritive uh, in its nature developing from the primary endosperm nucleus as a result of a triple fusion and ovule is a structure which is present inside the uh, ovarian cavity on the placenta and uh, embryo sac is otherwise called as female gametophyte. So, here as we know that uh, megaspore mother cell will be present. So, from that megaspore mother cell will undergo meiosis to form into tetrad of megaspores. Out of the tetrad, three will get degenerated, one will be retained as a functional megaspore. That functional megaspore will undergo further free nuclear mitotic divisions to form into embryo sac. That means, if you take the structure, this is a functional megaspore. This functional megaspore will be convert, will divide by free nuclear division, the first uh, free nuclear division by mitosis to form in to form into two nuclei, one, we, one towards the upper pole and one towards the lower pole and gradually the upper one will divide by two like this, finite will be converted into a four nucleated on the upper side, four nucleated on the lower side and out of that one will come to a center from the upper side, one will come to a center from the lower side and it will be converted into an uh, three nucleated on the upper side and three, two, three nucleated on the lower side and the two nuclei in the center. This is called as a embryo sac. That means, the functional megaspore is converted into or uh, developing into 
the embryo sac or the female gametophyte. So from the given options, option A is the correct answer. Question number 15. Study the following statements and select the incorrect option. The given options are A. Tapetum nourishes the developing pollen grains. B. Hilum represents the junction between ovule and funicle. C. In aquatic plants such as water hyacinth and water lily, pollination occurs by water. And D. The primary endosperm nucleus is triploid. So here, tapetum is the innermost layer of the anther wall which is uh, providing nourishment to the developing pollen grains. So is a nutritive tissue. Tapetum is a nutritive tissue which is uh, helping in uh, providing nourishment to the pollen grains. So this statement is correct. The second statement that is hilum represents the junction between the ovule and funicle. So here if you see the structure of this uh, ovule. This is the structure of ovule where this is funicle and this is the ovule, actual ovule body. So the funicle and ovule has joined at a point called as a hilum. So hilum is a structure which is uh, acting as a junction between ovule and the funicle. So this is also correct. Then statement 3, in aquatic, plant, in aquatic plants like water hyacinth and water lily, pollination occurs by water. Actually, these plants have colorful and attractive flowers. So, the pollination occurs by insects. Maybe they are present, they are the aquatic plants, but the pollination occurs by insects. So, this is a wrong statement. And uh, D, the primary endosperm nucleus is triploid. So, yes, as the primary endosperm nucleus is formed as a result of uh, uh, triple fusion. Uh, haploid chromosomes from the male gamete and diploid chromosomes from the secondary nucleus will get fused here to convert it into a triploid structure. So the primary endosperm nucleus is triploid is a correct statement. So from the given options, the incorrect statement is option C. So the correct answer is option C. Question number 16. In which of the following pollination is autogamous? The given options are gaitonogamy, B. Xenogamy, C. Chasmogamy and D. Clistogamy. So here first one Gaitonogamy. Gaitonogamy is a cross pollination between two flowers present on different plants. But those two plants should be belong to same species. So it is uh, definitely a uh, cross pollination. The second one is xenogamy. Xenogamy is a process where cross pollination occurs between two flowers. But these two flowers are present on the same plant. So it is also cross pollination. And the next one is chasmogamy. Chasmogamy is a process of pollination which occurs in a open flower. The pollination which occurs in open flower. So there is a possibility of cross pollination here. Then Clistogamy. Clistogamy is a pollination which occurs in unopened flowers. When the flower is uh, unopened, there is no possibility for cross pollination. Definitely, it had to go for self pollination. That is autogamy. So, from the given options, option D is the correct answer. Question number seventeen: Wind pollinator flowers are the given options are a small, brightly colored, producing large number of pollen grains. B small producing large number of dry pollen grains. C. Large producing abundant nectar and pollen. D. Small producing nectar and dry pollen. So here anemophily that is pollination by wind. 
if the pollination is by wind what are the adaptations that uh, pollen grain should show or the flower should show so here the flowers should have feathery and large stigmas so that whenever the pollen grains are uh, blowing in the air they can catch hold of the pollen grains and uh, what about the pollen grains here the pollen grain should be small they should be light in weight when they are light in weight they can easily be carried by the wind and uh, most of the things what happens the pollen grains will blow along with the direction of the movement of air so that uh, they may not reach to the right type of stigma that's the reason why here they should produce large number of pollen grains and uh, these pollen grains should be dry when they are dry then only they will be light in weight they can be carried easily in the air so that means the pollen grain should be small producing large number of dry pollen grains so from the given options option b is the correct answer question number 18 what does the filiform apparatus do at the entrance into ovule the given options are a it helps in entry of pollen tube into a synergid b it prevents entry of more than one pollen tube into the embryo sac c it brings about opening of the pollen tube and d it guides pollen tube from a synergid to egg so here it is a question related to filiform apparatus filiform apparatus is a finger like uh, structure that is present in the synergid cell towards the micropylar end so here what happens what does it will do means it have two functions to be done one is it will secrete a chemical uh, which which will direct the pollen tube into the embryo sac that too towards the synergid in which the filiform apparatus is present so for example if uh, this is a upper side of uh, embryo sac where uh, xl is present in the center on either side the synergids are present the filiform apparatus which is a finger like structure here so when the pollen grain is coming here it will uh, secrete the chemical so that so that because of that uh, chemical the pollen tube will be attracted towards the synergid present in the embryo sac that means it will help in the entry of pollen tube into a synergid so either into this synergid or if this is a synergid this will form apparatus will uh, help in attracting moving into that synergid so from the given options option a is the correct answer question number 19 which of the following pairs of plant structures has haploid number of chromosomes the given options are a megaspore mother cell and antipodal cells b egg cell and antipodal cells c nucleus and antipodal cells and d egg cell and secondary nucleus so here first option megaspore mother cell megaspore mother cell is always diploid in condition and uh, the other one are the antipodal cells of course these antipodal cells are three but each of the cell is in haploid condition so both the cells should be haploid that ha that have been given in the option so this is wrong and uh, the second one is uh, egg cell and antipodal cells egg cell it is haploid and antipodal cells also haploid both of them are haploid in condition and the third one is nucleus so generally the nucleus will be in diploid condition and uh, antipodal of course antipodal as we said that uh, they are uh, haploid in condition but both the, both of them should be haploid according to this question so this is also incorrect and uh, d egg cell 
or egg nucleus of course egg cell and egg nucleus is one and the same so both of them are haploid in condition and the secondary nucleus the secondary nucleus is formed as a result of the fusion of upper polar nucleus and the lower polar nucleus so it will be diploid in condition so one is diploid so it is also incorrect so from the given options the two cells which are present in the given option should be haploid in condition so from them it is uh, b where x cells and also antipodals are haploid in condition from the given option option b is the correct answer question number 20 which of the following is surrounded by a callous wall the given options are a male gamete b egg c pollen grain and d microspore mother cell so here when mega when microspore mother cell is divided so it is converted into tetrad in that process all the four cells of the microspore are remained intact with each other so that is because of the callos the callos is the one which is uh, making all the microspores to get uh, to retain as a intact cells so from the given options option d is the correct answer question number 21 the arrangement of the nuclei in a normal embryo sac in the dicot plants the given options are a 3 plus 2 plus 3 b 2 plus 3 plus 3 c 3 plus 3 plus 2 and d 2 plus 4 plus 2 so here in the normal embryo sac the so if you observe the structure this is a normal embryo sac structure where on the micropylar side we can see the presence of uh, three cells so this is egg apparatus where the three cells are present and on the ant and the chalazal end three more cells are present these are called as antipodals and in the center the two nuclei will present so this is called as a central cell the central cell contains uh, one upper polar nucleus and one low, lower polar nucleus so it is 2 so arrangement will be 3 plus 2 plus 3 so from the given options option a is the correct answer question number 22 apomixis is the given options are a formation of seeds by fusion of gametes b formation of seeds without syngamy and meiosis C formation of seeds with syngamy but no meiosis and D none of the above and here <coughs> apomixis is a bypassing process the bypassing of uh, the syngamy process that is no there is no fusion of male and female gamete at the same time the bypassing of meiosis when there is no process of syngamy there is no chance for a meiotic process so bypassing of these two formation of the seeds is called as apomixis so from the given options option b is the correct answer question number 23 when micropyle chalaza and funicle are in a straight line the ovule is called the given options are a orthotrophous b anatrophous c solanaceae and d myrtaceae so here the straight ovule that is uh, this is a new cellular part where uh, embryo sac is present and this is a integument and the chalaza so micropyle chalaza and furicle so all the three are present on the straight line so we call this as a straight ovule or this is this is otherwise called as orthotrophous ovule so from the given options option a is the correct answer